Lesson 56, Rearranging Before Graphing. There is also set notation in this lesson, but we're going to omit that for now. And you can omit those problems in the lesson set. Anyway, we've been graphing equations by just plugging in x values and figuring out what y equals, or plugging in for y and figures out what that, figure out what x equals. Now we're going to work on rearranging equations. And our goal is to get y all by itself on one side of the equation. See how that's just, just y there. Now it could be on the right side, but it's, it's, it's more common that y is on the left side. Anyway, you can see y isn't by itself here. You have a 3x and a plus and a 2y. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 3x from both sides. And so when I subtract 3x from both sides, it disappears from this side. 3x minus 3x is 0, and it becomes minus 3x over here. So you could write it like this, 2y equals 4 minus 3x. A more proper way to write it would be 2y equals negative 3x plus 4. We talked about it before, descending order. You like it in descending order. Now, neither one's not, they're both correct, so you can use either, but this is the more proper way. It's like putting your fork on your left and your knife and your spoon on your right when you eat dinner. That's the proper way. Now, if the fork's on the right and the knife and the spoon are on the left, you'll still be able to eat perfectly fine. It's just, it's against convention. Now, the other thing I like to do, instead of doing that, subtracting 3x from both sides, an equivalent thing is when I take something like 3x, I can just bring it to the other side by changing the sign. So 3x positive on this side, I bring it to this side, it's minus. So 3x, I bring it to this side, it's minus 3x. Pretty easy just to do it that way. So I still don't have y by itself. I have 2y equals negative 3x plus 4. It's multiplied by 2. So what I have to do is divide each side by 2. Now I'm going to divide each term by 2. I could divide the whole side by 2, but it makes it a little bit more difficult to simplify. So I divide each side by 2, and I could cancel out the 2's, and I'm left with y. And then negative 3x and 4 over 2 is 2. So now I got y all by itself. That was my goal. Beautiful thing. All right. Now I want to find out different points. And so it's always good to begin with x equals 0. So I'm going to make a little chart over here and let x equals 0. Always do x equals 0, please. It makes me so happy. So if you get negative 3 halves and x equals 0, that means multiplication. A number next to a letter is multiplication. Negative 3 halves times 0 is 0 plus 2. So y equals 2. So I write y equals 2. Now normally I'd let x equal 1, but then I'm going to have a fraction. So this time I get a little clever and I let x equal 2. Why would I do that? Well, because we know it will cancel out. So I'm going to let x equal 2. Let's, let's do it down here. y equals negative 3 halves x plus 2. I'm going to let x equal 2. And look, they can cancel 2. If I write 2 of it, you can see that it cancels beautifully. So I get negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. So when x equals 2, y equals negative 1. And then for this, now I'm done. I could actually just graph that and give me my line. But sometimes it's good to do a third point just to make sure you have it right. So I'm going to let x equal negative 2 for the same reason I let x equal 2. So negative 3 over 2 times negative 2. The 2's cancel, and I'm left with negative 1. So I get negative 3 times negative 1, which is 3 plus 2. So that gives me 5, negative 2, 5. So those are my three points, and I can write them as ordered pairs. I don't have to, but I can write them as ordered pairs. Remember, when we write them as ordered pairs, the x value goes first and the y value goes second. It's like alphabetical order. So now I'm going to grab 0, 2. So I go to the origin right here where the two axes intersect. x equals 0 means I just stay here, and I go up 2. That's my first point. Back to the origin. 
2, negative 1. So it means 2 to the right and then down 1. So I went 2 to the right and then down 1. The last point is negative 2, 5. So I go back to my graph. I let x equal negative. So I'm starting at the origin. I go 2 to the left and then I go up 5. So those are my three points, and you can see they fit on a line. So we can draw the line through the points. Now this is going to be tough with holding the camera, but there's my line. And that's the answer. Now don't end your lines at the dots. The lines go on forever and ever. So some people represent that. Some teachers make you put an arrow at the end. I'm not going to make you do that, but it's not a bad idea. Bye.